Hey, this is Scott at Fire Breathing Christian, and you need to be, if you're not already, you need to be following along with the nation of Hungary, an Eastern European country that not a lot of Americans are aware of, but we need to be aware. A lot of very good and important things happening there, the kinds of things we're told can't happen everywhere. And so before we get into the recent news that's inspired me to make this video, I wanted to revisit an article, uh, an event actually from earlier this year, back in April, when Viktor uh, Orban won re-election. He's been re-elected several times now and his party secured a supermajority. And this is a guy who is very much hated by George Soros and the left for reasons we'll be getting into shortly. Uh, but we need to understand that there's a reason why a man gets reelected again and again and his party secures super majorities when they're making certain promises, doing certain things, and then following through on them. We need to be paying attention to what those are, what's going on, why it might be good, why it might be bad. But we need to be noting in this context why the people of Hungary are really being blessed in ways that we're told in our culture just can't happen here in the real world. One of the big uh, sort of myths of the social justice warrior, progressive Marxist um, narrative is that their their cause is just inevitable. They, they can't help but ultimately win. Eventually, they're just going to be, uh, homosexuality is going to be accepted everywhere and big government will be everywhere. And, uh, you know, all, all the things that we're told are associated with progressive or a progressive worldview, meaning a leftist Marxist worldview. Those things we're told are inevitable, and the demise of basic the Christ, basically the Christian West is therefore also inevitable. And it's this assumption, this assumption part of the narrative that we get from the mainstream media, the NPCs and the SJWs permeating mainstream media. It's that narrative that's seriously threatened by a situations like that, which is unfolding. In Hungary. So Viktor Orban won re-election, gets supermajority. I'm going to read briefly through this so you get a sense of the context. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban easily won a third consecutive term Sunday, and his party was poised to regain its supermajority in parliament, according to preliminary results from the country's election. With 84.7% of the votes counted, uh, his party and the, its ally, the Christian Democrat Party, had secured 133 of the 199 seats in the legislature, the minimum needed for a two-thirds majority. And in the context here, well, I'll read through and this will give you a little bit more of it. The right-wing nationalist Jobbik Party placed second with 26 seats, while socialist left-wing coalition ran third with 20. Only two other parties, former Prime Minister Ferenc, and I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce his, uh, pronounce his last name, Democratic Coalition and the Green Politics Can Be Different Party were expected to surpass the 5% threshold needed to form a parliamentary faction. Orban began a brief speech to cheering supporters after preliminary results were announced with a clear message, we won. He also told the crowd, we created the opportunity to defend Hungary. Defend Hungary. Think, make Hungary great again. That kind of mentality. A great battle is behind us. We have achieved a decisive victory. Orban won his fourth term overall on a platform that openly demonizes migrants to Europe. That's the way that, you know, the USA Today, this, this article's at USA Today, and, uh, you know, the NPC SJW narrative is to demonize Viktor Orban by saying he demonizes migrants. He hates uh, these people when nothing could be further from the truth. Defending Hungary, defending the culture, securing its borders does not mean inherently that you hate anyone. Yet that's the narrative from the NPC left. And so this was happening. So it's easy. And it's also easy to see why George Soros is pouring money and effort and energy into destroying uh, this Viktor Orban led revival reformation of Hungary that now, and I, this is, so I, this, this happened back in April and this has been building obviously for a while. As the article pointed out, this man's been reelected multiple times. His party has now been given a uh, supermajority power again and again because they've they've advanced a certain agenda publicly and then they followed through on it at every opportunity. The latest installments of that following through is what I want to focus on now. These are articles from this week. Hungary gender studies ban draws university anger. So the story really isn't, they don't want you to really focus on just the fact that Hungary has banned gender studies but that it's drawn anger. It's inspiring the wrath of the folks in the university. And so this article published at uh, Yahoo uh, and originally by AFP 
Uh, I'll read through it. You'll get a sense of what's going on here. A prestigious Hungarian university on Tuesday blasted a government decree that prohibits gender study courses as a major infringement on academic freedom. Now, let's remember, we know from experience, as if it, we needed the experience, we shouldn't have had to have the experiences that we've had in America and throughout the West, but we have. So what is gender studies? Gender studies is ultimately convincing you there's no such thing as a boy or a girl. Gender studies is Bruce Jenner is a woman. Gender studies is the, un the fundamental undermining of the most basic elements required to identify, much less understand or pursue, family, which is why gender studies is so critical to the cultural Marxist leftist progressive movement. And so when Hungary comes along and says, no, we're just not having that here, that makes leftist NPCs crazy, crazier. Now, we'll continue with the article. The decree, and see this language, the decree, it's a decree from a tyrant, signed by Prime Minister Viktor Orban, and in force since Saturday, dropped the subject from a list of master's degree programs entitled to official accreditation and financial support. So again, what, what is gender studies is what leads you to, inevitably, and it's this is what it's made to do to destroy the concept of gender and sex, and thereby, family. And really the culture, it's part of the, the fundamental goal, the basic goal of cultural Marxism, identity politics, is to destroy everything so that they can rebuild it, in, in a, rebuild the thing that they've destroyed in a manner consistent with their Marxist worldview. And again, the, we see the fruits of it, and a lot of fruits <laughs> wandering around as a result of our embrace of the gender studies farce. Bruce Jenner, we're told, is a woman, while at the same time, the same people try to advance the Me Too movement and talk about actual genetic women as though they are deserving of some sort of special consideration when, according to their own gender studies movement and identity politics, well, anyone is a woman who identifies as a woman. So what's a woman? A woman is nothing. A woman is a fleeting feeling that comes and it goes, that's it. Same thing with man. So there are no boys in America now, no boys in the West, no girls, no men, no women because of gender studies. Viktor Orban and his multiple times now re-elected party has decided to act in a manner to preserve Hungary from the craziness, the insanity that's washing over other nations. So they're building a lifeboat. And this is why they're hated by Soros, the left, the NPCs that support uh, cultural Marxism and identity politics. This man is, is Satan to them. Now, another article. Interesting. I just found this one when short, right on the heels, this came up. Hungarian central bank stuns, announces tenfold jump in gold reserves. So not only are they dealing with the, the social crisis of the cultural Marxist identity politics attack on the family, on even the identification of boys and girls as boys and girls, he's also short, uh, addressing the fundamental economic issues that are going to lead the West to ruin, because we've pursued fiat currency, and for those who don't know, we'll be doing videos on that in the future, um, but fiat currency is basically just money by decree, which is what America has built its entire phony empire on. Money that's based on nothing. So Hungary, seeing what's going on here, has acted in a way completely contrary to America and the other suicidally stupid countries in the West. Here's what the, art the article at Zero Hedge here reads. In one of the most profound developments in the central bank gold market for a long time, the Hungarian National Bank, Hungary's cent central bank, just announced a tenfold jump in its monetary gold holdings. Tenfold! Ten times they've multiplied. 10% is a significant increase. This is a thousand percent gold. This is what they're doing. This is what their leader is doing for Hungary. And you got to ask yourself, and this is why I'm encouraging people, if, if, if you barely manage to start this video and stick with it because you're like, oh, hungry, who cares? Uh, if you're a, a MAGA person, a big Trump fan, someone who wants to see America do well, and I want to see America do well. I want to see America restored for real, legitimately, in a very in a meaningful, lasting way, Hungary is what you, who you need to look at here. Okay, they're doing things that we're not. Still, even though Trump is causing a lot of wonderful distress for the left, and he's doing a lot of damage to the system that's uh, in place in D.C., uh, Viktor Orban is the man. 
that, that Trump and others should be modeling. I'll continue with the article now. The central bank, known as, I will not say, try to pronounce that in Hungarian, made the announcement in Budapest, Hungary's capital. The details of Hungary's dramatic new gold purchase are as follows. Before this month, Hungary's central bank held 3.1 tons of gold. During the first two weeks of October, the first two weeks of October, the Hungarian National Bank purchased 28.4 tons of gold. Two weeks they made this purchase. They had 3.1 tons, and in two weeks they purchased 28.4 tons of gold. This gold purchase raised the central bank's gold holdings from 3.1 tons to 31.5, a 1,000% or tenfold increase. The Hungarian central bank had not altered its gold reserve since 1986, 32 years ago. The 28.4 tons of gold was purchased in physical form. This is important too. And its repatriation has already taken place to Hungary. That means they, they're not counting on other uh, corrupt governments in, throughout the West to hold their gold for them anymore. They've taken it back. I believe a lot of their gold had been held by the Bank of England. They've repatriated it, meaning they've brought it back to Hungary. So not only do they own the gold, they're holding the gold. Interestingly, the final bullet point here, Hungary now holds the same amount of gold as it held 70 years ago. And it actually holds it. It has it. So this is what's going on in Hungary. This is the model that we should be looking to. I'm, again, I'm, I love a lot of what Trump is doing. I just wish he could get on a hotline and establish a relationship with Viktor Orban so that he would begin to understand what Viktor Orban is doing for Hungary and why, so that maybe, just maybe, and, and the whole Make America Great Again idea could be rooted in the kind of reality that we're seeing for Viktor Orban's Hungary, because they really are heading in a great direction, in a real way, a serious way. They're not playing games, which is why George Soros and the left hates them. If you appreciate these kinds of perspectives in this video, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. And I would encourage you to be, be thinking about Hungary, learn more about what's going on over there, see how much they're hated. Just Google Viktor Orban. Read the uh, mainstream uh, media, uh, fake news, NPC-drenched um, media out there and what they're saying, how they're reporting on Hungary. See how much they hate what's going on there because they do not want this catching root or taking root in America or anywhere else, really. So keep these things in mind. Pray for Hungary. Think about Hungary. And Lord willing, we'll all be joining Hungary in this happy, wonderful, positive direction that they are now heading, thanks to Viktor Orban. If you appreciated this video and you want to support what we're doing, please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we post a new video, which we're hoping to do regularly on a daily basis from here on out on this subject and related subjects. Thank you very much for your support. Without it, we can't continue to do this.